Okay, so we can start. Hello, everybody. Glad to see you all. And uh, it's very nice and it's a big pleasure for me to have this webinar. Okay, some people are joining us. I hope it will be more and more. Good time. So it's good to have it, this webinar by the end of the year. So thank you very much. I want to thank all the team uh, who was organizing this because I understand that it's a lot of activity and it's done very well. And you see we are coming. People are coming one by one. Okay, so uh, first of all, it is our last meeting by the end of this year. And what's important, this is the end of the year. So we have less than one week to Christmas, a uh, couple of less than 10 days to New Year. <coughs> so it will be the end of 2016. And uh, we are lucky that we are still alive, all of us, because a lot of people didn't survive. And uh, we lost many friends, many colleagues this year, unfortunately. Uh, so this is the most important. We are still alive and we are moving forward. And I should tell you that this year was really very, very significant for all the world. It was tremendous transformation of the world's situation this year. And uh, we can, can only predict what will be next year. You know that the most important on geopolitical horizon was uh, this uh, election of new US president, Donald Trump. And I should tell you that by the time of the election, I was in the United States and it was absolutely unpredictable. Absolutely. <laughs> we know now how many money, power was uh, involved in the Clinton election, but it totally failed, everything. So Trump was much more uh, clever, much more uh, skilled and much more uh, successful and helpful, um, um, happier than uh, Clinton. So let's see what will be with him. Because again, on geopolitical, uh, a lot of transformation this year. And I should tell that in the field where we are all together, in the field of uh, energy, of energy study, of different uh, transformational study, it was again very important. This year, many conferences, at many meetings, um, and it was every month, every month, even more than that. Uh, it was practically 15 big conferences and uh, not just counting workshops where I was presenting. So it means that response uh, of the world to our new science, to our new development is really great. And I mean uh, quantum physical approach to medicine, I mean quantum physical approach to biology and to study of our environment, so all together. So in our company, uh, we had uh, a lot of development as well. And uh, we had uh, many new lines developed. Uh, some will be announced by the end of the year, but most only next year. But I should tell you that it was very successful development again. And uh, our biowell company was really on big scale now. And it is on big scale. So we are coming to this with very good results. The latest, the latest uh, was our trip to Bali, Indonesia, where I was invited together with some colleagues uh, to uh, be present as at the meeting of uh, Bali sultans and rajas. You know, this country is partly run by Hinduists, partly by uh, Buddhists, partly by Muslims. <coughs> there are the rajas, and those uh, people decided to organize their own confederation. On the governmental level, and they have some power, they have money, so <clears throat> they want to be presented as some political and uh, social power. And we were invited together with a couple of our colleagues to their gathering 
And I should tell that I was, I had a feeling like being in medieval century because we were invited to the palace. It was a beautiful, beautiful palace on the shore of the ocean. It was many, many servants around, more than 50 servants for uh, us. And it was, of course, dinner. It was dances, beautiful dances, and it was many ceremonies. So we, we uh, I was awarded a special diploma. I can show this to you. Please have a look how it looks like. You see it is all in gold. It is, and together with <coughs> was given special uh, decoration uh, and uh, this is uh, indication of the world interest to our development of energy medicine and energy line <laughs> so it's not just myself it is all that we are doing all together because only like community only like our big group of people who are developing this in the world, we can move it forward on big scale. So uh, at the same time, now we have a group of very interesting scientists, mostly Russian scientists, but who are developing new uh, scientific lines with different sensors, with different instruments. And we are all uh, physicists, technicians. So we are based on measurements. And we try to measure the influence of human energy to environment, to space, and to see how it influences our life, how it influences our health, how it influences space around ourselves. <coughs> the latest experiment that people are doing, those are experiments with plants, and they are measuring response of different plants to human intentions. You know that uh, it was first uh, Baxt who was doing this type of experiments. You know about this. And then it was published several interesting books about uh, enigmatic life of plants. Now we have uh, very good scientific data that plants has its own nervous system, has its own consciousness, has its own response to environment. And in particular, now we have more and more data that they respond to human environment and human consciousness. Just recently, I met one of my friends uh, who is the director of our biggest university. And we were sitting in his uh, office discussing uh, our new projects. And then when I was leaving, he showed me uh, a plant in a port. And he told, you know what? Uh, I was sitting in another office and this plant was with me for five or six years then i moved to this office but it was in a hurry so i just forgot to get this plant and plants start dying you know after six years of successful life it started dying then secretary came to this man and told him okay maybe you will take this plant to your new office he took it put in the room in the corner and in two days land was alive and boom, again blossoming so it means that we have consciousness in every cell of our body we have consciousness in plants we have consciousness in all living beings but of course it's just a different level of consciousness in one of my books i propose a concept of levels of consciousness so what's the difference between ourselves, like human beings, and cats and dogs? Because of course, I hope you agree that no one would think <coughs> that cats and dogs has a very highly developed consciousness. So what's the difference? And the difference in the level of consciousness. So we should tell about the first level of consciousness as response of living beings to the environment with conscious change of behavior. And then you understand that every cell, every bacteria, every plant has this type of consciousness. Next level, of course, it is the level when um, we can not only respond to consciousness, to environment, 
but predict and plan its behavior in accordance with possible environmental change. And of course, you understand that it's much higher level. So only much higher animals can respond this way. So it may be uh, some um, vertebras, it may be fish, it may be snakes, it may be lizards, but this is higher level of consciousness. Then next level, we can tell about human being. So what's the difference? The difference is that we are together, that we communicate with each other, that we can transform our ideas to our next generations, that we have memory and generational memory. That's what we have as human beings and no other beings have this. At the same time, we can tell about collective consciousness of animals. And you know that collective behavior of ants, bees, wolves, and some other animals, it is very important for them. No bee can exist without bee half, without a group. Same as uh, ants. Same, of course, it's somehow it related to our uh, human society, but to some extent. So next we can tell about consciousness of great people, people who are doing something new, who are developing something new, not based on the previous development of civilization. And those are great inventors, those are great painters, great musicians, composers, who are developing something absolutely new. And in our Western civilization, we know them by name in last maybe three, four thousand years. Not all of them, but most of them, and, or a lot of them. And of course, next level, those are level of people who have connection to higher plane of reality and receiving this information from higher planes of reality can influence big groups of people. And first of all, this is known to us. Prophets like Moses, like Zaratustra, like Buddha, Jesus Christ, Mohammed, some later on, some others. We can again, we can name them by name. And we understand now, we know now that they had absolutely direct connection with higher planes of reality. So we have no doubts that those planes do exist and they have very clear, direct influence to our life. If you want something, you need to think about this. You need to project your vision in the future. And if you are doing this right way, then you will be given. But only, of course, if you are doing this in the right way. So uh, then we can tell about our integrative consciousness of humanity. And we can tell about consciousness field. So we are like little cells in a network, only all together, like human society, we can really do something. And all society are based on big groups of people. Amazon tribe can survive if they are lucky, but they can't organize civilization because they have no means to create big groups. Only when people can gather in big groups and most in the cities, in big settlements, then they can create civilization. And then this civilization can create next level of consciousness and next level of development. So it's an interesting topic, and of course I can discuss on this topic for many hours. Uh, in October it was a very interesting conference in Sweden, in nearby Uppsala. Uh, it was a conference of European Society of Scientific Exploration, conference on consciousness. And it was really top level presenters at this conference, both from Europe, from the United States, it was very, very interesting discussion at this conference of both conceptual ideas and uh, practical experimental data because you know that all conceptual ideas of consciousness now are based on quantum electrodynamics. 
we need to understand the difference between quantum mechanics and quantum electrodynamics. Quantum mechanics, it was great, of course, achievement of humankind. It was tremendous theory developed by the beginning of 20th century, but it was very, very limited theory. And Schrodinger equation allows to describe behavior of simple quantum uh, systems, but doesn't allow to describe behavior of complicated quantum systems. So it was due to uh, Robert Feynman, genius of one more genius of 20th century, who developed this quantum electrodynamics. It is theory that allows to describe behavior of complex systems. And he applied this to gases. Then it was applied to uh, crystals. Then it was applied to water. And uh, this allows us to develop uh, the theoretical uh, concepts now applied to consciousness. And as for water, it was another very interesting conference uh, in Bulgaria, in Sofia, in September uh, this year, uh, led by uh, Professor Jared Pollock, who is a great scientist, uh, writer, and presenter. And uh, this conference, it was meeting of ma many people who was uh, developing this, uh, who are developing this new science of water. And now with Professor Wajekov, we are preparing a book on uh, this new science of water. And the name of this book would be A New Scientific Revolution, a Scientific Explanation of Homeopathy. Because now we have conceptual principles, we have theory based on quantum electrodynamics. This theory was developed by uh, Emilio del Giudici in Italy and uh, Propagata. Unfortunately, they're not with us anymore, but uh, it is really, really very precise scientific theory, and it was scientifically uh, experimentally proven. So now we have a lot of experimental data on this topic. And of course, you know that uh, another great scientist, Luc Montagnier, a Nobel Prize winner from uh, France, is doing now a tremendous experiment on transformation of information from one water sample to another water sample. And in particular, his famous experiment is transformation of DNA information to pure water. And then later on, with PCR uh, reaction, we can find DNA in this initially pure water. So it's another great achievement. And now this information may be transferred even by internet. So this again, tremendously interesting achievements uh, of this, this coming uh, um, this uh, year. So you see that uh, it was so many new development and it's coming. Sometimes it's absolutely unusual. Just recently I've been to uh, United States and there uh, just we stopped a nearby hotel with my colleagues and there I've seen the latest uh, Tesla car, electrical car. And of course it's absolutely futuristic car. It looks like uh, from science fiction, but it's reality. It's reality of our everyday. So, and same as cars running without driver, again, it's reality. Again, it's uh, coming to us, and uh, I'm 100% sure that in 50 years, maybe, we'll have all our cars uh, driving in, not just on the roads, but in three dimensions. So, it will be uh, no traffic jams, because we'll have these cars running in three dimensions. <coughs> so, Again, as you see, it is a lot of very interesting development. And with BioWell, with our line, we have uh, very good results. Now we have several thousand people who are using this BioWell simultaneously in the world. And we have very good, very interesting results in medicine, very good responses. 
And uh, this year, together with Professor Dr. Michael Borkin, we developed a new concept of uh, interpretation viable data. It is so named four pillar concept of BioWell, and it's based on analysis of four main, from our point of view, systems of the body. And uh, now I'm finishing a book, now it's in editing phase of these uh, four pillars of health. And this book will be published by beginning of next year. So beginning of next year, I plan to have this book published on Amazon.com and it will be available. Uh, this concept was uh, tested at different workshops, seminars with many patients, of course, and it's based not just on my ideas, because I'm not a medical doctor, but it's based on ideas of very prominent world scientists and doctors, like Dr. Michael Borkin, Dr. Michael Galitzer, uh, Dr. Professor Beverly Rubik, and many others. And uh, it allows us to see absolutely new uh, understanding of what we are measuring. And not only to take measurements, but even more than that, to give recommendations. Because we understand that uh, the goal of any measurement any diagnostic tool, any analysis to help people. So if you tell people, oh, I think that something in your liver, maybe it is something wrong, maybe it is some warm or something bad, just go somewhere. It's nonsense. The goal, not just to tell people about what may be wrong in their system, but to offer very precise step-by-step -step procedure. What should be done? So based on this new principle of interpretation, we are developing this procedure. It is in my book. And now I am developing together with, of course, all our team. We are developing new artificial intelligence program that would allow us to make this conclusion step by step. So, of course, it takes time uh, and because it's not just to, the, to write down algorithm and program, but it is important to test it <coughs> with many patients, with many cases, and only then, when it is tested, to present it uh, on big scale. So, uh, I am sure it will take us maybe half a year, maybe more, it will be ready by next year somewhere. And it's a program that would allow you, based on viable measurements, to make not only conclusions, but recommendations. What should be done step by step? And for this, it may be used by practitioners, it may be used by medical doctors, it may be used by uh, people even at home. So it will be next level of great really big development so you see it's all coming it's all in our projects it's all in our plans it's it, it, it this is real plans same as next level of biowell we are uh, part of the instruments that people will be using at home now you know that it's a big trend now in uh, new medicine so more and the more responsibility in analysis comes to patients we understand that it's impossible to go to doctor with any complaint it's impossible to make analysis complicated analysis very often plus most of devices are not only expensive but they are invasive so idea uh, to give people simple use devices that would allow to measure physiological parameters and that would allow people to define uh, unpleasant or dangerous situations. Now we have this more and more devices in the development of this kind on the market as well. Uh, just recently, it was a big uh, conference on this topic in Silicon Valley. 
and uh, they are measuring many parameters. We are included in this line. We are measuring energy. And based on the principle, we can make this analysis. Of course, idea that uh, people, uh, lay people, they wouldn't see these results. But results would come through the internet, through the cloud, to professionals, to analytical center, where it will be done this analysis. And then people will have these indications. Everything is good, green light, or please be careful, yellow light, or just call your doctor. And doctor would be able to call patient and ask him, oh, Mr. Johnson, what has happened today? Why do you have this? bad indications what did you do yesterday please tell me what you did you drink what did you eat what did you do with your wife and girlfriends so you see that's how it is it's a big trend in the world now how it is developing and of course it is based on our new development that we are testing our in our labs when we transform biowell to mobile phones and biowell will be operating with mobile phones then of course it will make a lot of people much easier to use it so this will be next year again uh, it is all in the process it is all coming uh, and uh, it will i hope it will be big trend because we have a lot of experience in this field i can tell you I can share with you that we have a lot of very good results in um, uh, predictive analysis. We had very big research uh, in big institution where it was shown that by measuring just two ring fingers, it is possible to predict potential miscarriage for pregnant ladies because uh, signal from this ring finger it is related for ladies with blood circulation in a warm area so you can imagine pregnant lady just rent this little device and take measurements every morning and then again green light yellow light red light so what uh, and then only doctor can predict, uh, can uh, evaluate what's how dangerous is it. So we have many lines of this kind. And of course, uh, we are restricted in development by FDA. You understand this? Because we should be very, very careful. Now we are in the process of FDA certification. It should be uh, over by beginning of next year. And we are certified as a wellness, medical wellness device. So again, it's not for medical diagnosis. It's not allowed. But it is for medical analysis. Plus, of course, you can use BioCore device. And with BioCore, it is really very, very good, uh, I would say, stress relief device. Again, it's part of wellness. Uh, this year we had many good results with BioCore. We now have several hundreds of BioCore devices worldwide. And all the responses are very positive. Very good. It was many cases when people was able to relieve their stress. It was many cases when people was able to uh, get out of insomnia that they had for many years and start sleeping normally. So we have uh, no doubts that this is very good line. Now we plan to develop this line more and more. And in our projects to have uh, several extra devices connected to BioWell. So it should be like a home uh, medical system overall home medical system and we are moving to this and of course uh, together with this i would say medical line health line well-being line 
we're developing cars lines. This year we had a big contract with uh, Young Living Essential Oil Company. Maybe you know this company. This is the biggest in the world producer of essential oils. And in the process of preparing this system, we became very good friends with Gary Young and Mary Young, who are absolutely outstanding people. I has tremendous respect both to Gary and Mary. And just I've been to their home. I was invited to their family and very well accepted by them. And it is fantastic people, fantastic people. You know, that create this huge empire, <laughs> billion dollar empire, in a relatively short time, from nothing, from scratch. That is really amazing. Plus, Gary has many, many health issues, many health issues. We can, by Biowell, I was able to detect a lot of issues beforehand. And still, he is fighting. He is very active. He is very energetic. So that is example for all of us that just by spirit, by your consciousness, you can really change situation around yourself, and you can make your dreams true. Yesterday, with my dear wife, we've been at the concerts of uh, Dmitry Horostovsky and his friends. You know, he's uh, one of the top level world singer and uh, we know we are following him for many years and he's really top level he was in metropolitan opera all the time he was presenting with uh, top level orchestra top level uh, singers but uh, two years ago he was diagnosed with brain cancer and you understand it's very very serious unexpectable and grave station. And he's fighting. He's fighting. He, of course, situation is very difficult for him. He's under chemotherapy now. He was, he had surgery, but he's fighting, he's presenting. And it was a wonderful concert yesterday of Nita Krastovsky and his friends. And it was several thousand people in the audience as a whole. And all it was standing ovation for many, many minutes. So again, this is example for us that with our consciousness, with our intention, we can really change the world, we can change station. And uh, I just want to show you, maybe we have some minutes, to show you some of our latest results. It was experiment that we did uh, recently this autumn and uh, this experiment is a two type of experiments one experiment is measuring energy or space in different situations another experiment that i'm it is measuring a response of sensors and first of all sputnik sensor water sensor to consciousness these type of experiments are now available to everybody because we have these devices, we have programs, we have technology, we have methodology. And now in our project to develop this all together, not in one laboratory, not just random experiments, but to make it in different parts of the world, to make it simultaneously all together, and then to have these results uh, and to make meta-analysis. So let me show you some of our latest, just two, two latest experiments. We had many, but just two. Okay, so let's make it. Okay, now, yes, here we are. Do you see the screen? It's okay? Can you see the screen? I hope yes. I have no response, but I hope so. Okay, so this beautiful cathedral, it's a, one of the cathedrals in Moscow. You know that Russia, it is Orthodox country, and we have many beautiful church cathedrals. And in one of the cathedrals, this beautiful one, we have this icon. 
This icon was presented to Russia, Russian dukes, in uh, 12th century. And this is holy icon, icon for all Russian population, for all Orthodox population. And this Russian was kept in different churches. It survived many transformations of Russian history. In Soviet time, it was kept in uh, Tretikovsky Gallery in the museum. Then later on, quite recently, it was given back to church. So I was allowed to take measurements with Sputnik nearby, just nearby this icon. And please have a look. What do we have here? This is the moment, this measurement of Sputnik for uh, two, more than two hours. And it was run in offline mode. So I was able to see results only later on after processing data, only several hours data. And of course, it was staying nearby the icon and no one touched it. And you see, in the beginning, people are gathering. And you see change of signal. Then at this moment, it is be beginning of Salter reading, and you see this peak, you see response. But still, signal is changing, coming down, and it was several hundred people in the church gathering together. Then at this moment, it was choir that began thinking. <coughs> Beautiful Russian choir. Here, beginning of the service. Here, you see this huge peak beginning of a sermon by a high priest. It's a beautiful priest, beautiful, uh, wonderful person. I know him. And then it was lasted all this Russian ceremony for several hours. And this is the end of ceremony. So you see, it was response of a censor to main moments of this ceremony. And we discussed this with one of my friends, physicists, and he told, okay, what would you expect? You have several hundred people in the church. And people are breathing, people are standing in Russian church. So what would you expect? I tell you, okay, okay. Would it be the influence of human evaporation, human breathing? Then we would have increase of signal or decrease of signal all the time. But we have quite stable signal. So it means that it's not response to human activity it's response to something else even more than that later i've done measurements in this same church but outside of the icon and you see those two lines this is time dynamics of a signal sputnik signal outside of the icon and this number one it is nearby the icon and you see the difference it's really big difference at the end, of course, it has tremendous influence to human beings. It was a person before and after this ceremony, after two hours of staying there in, in the church. Then at night, I was done measurement in another cathedral <coughs> in Moscow during uh, organ concert, and it was response of signal to all moments of the concert. Next days, together with my friends and colleagues, we were able to come to different cemeteries in Moscow and took measurements nearby several uh, graves, and particularly nearby the grave of uh, Chekhov. You know, Chekhov, he is a great Russian writer, famous writer, playwriter, and uh, he's one of my favorites. I read all his writings, I've seen all his plays, and I know all his biography in details. And you see, this is a big difference. Those are number one, two measurements in the church and the cathedral. And those are measurements nearby uh, at the cemetery. One cemetery and another cemetery. And you see huge difference. We have a special parameter and the name of environmental activity. And this parameter has very low value in the church, very stable, very low, and quite high, more than 200 uh, at the cemeteries. 
<laughs> At the same time, it's interesting. Together with my son Kirill, uh, quite recently we came, we've been to Jerusalem and we came to the temple and we did measurement with Sputnik at the top of the temple nearby the Copts church and there this parameter was 380 so much much higher even so this it means it is so interesting while in uh, nearby the sea, this parameter was around 60, 80, 100, not more than that. So you see, it is indication that uh, with our uh, Sputnik, we can really take measurement of uh, very interesting, uh, uh, it's in Italian, I don't see it. Very interesting processes and we can detect a lot of tremendously interesting process. Let me show you one more experiment. Let me show you, I need to find it. Mm -hmm. Here it is. You see, this experiment was done in uh, St. Petersburg in September. And the idea was that we had 11 people in Moscow, Penza and Belgorod. So more than 700 kilometers from St. Petersburg, who was sending their intentions from 11 to 11.30 a.m. for half an hour to our lab. And the bio two biowall devices in parallel was operating from 8.40 in the morning till 6 p.m. in offline mode. So I turned on those both devices and then I closed the room, so no one was present in the room. And you see, this uh, every bar it is half an hour measurement, average of half an hour. And this is area for two sensors. You see, signal is increasing from the morning, and at the moment of sending intention, it strongly decreases. And then it has some behavior later on. You see, absolutely clear effect. With standard deviation, it is different. It is increases, highly increased at the moment of intention, and then it decreased. So you see, it was very precise, very clear experiment, and very clear results. So again, it's indication for us that uh, our consciousness has absolutely direct influence to the world. That with our consciousness, we can change the world. We can change not only uh, other people, but we can change environment. And we need to remember this because if we do this with positive intentions, then we have very strong positive influence. If you do it with negative intentions, then of course it may be devastating not only for other people, but for <laughs> So please remember this. Because now we have Christmas coming, we have New Year coming, it will be great celebrations, big celebrations, and let's make it a special event. Let us be prepared for the next year. Let's be ready for this. And let's have a lot of new interesting achievements in the next year. Okay, so now we have time for questions. As I know, we need to have questions from your side, from you, and I'm ready to answer. Okay. Now, Dr. Karakov. Uh, this is Frans Hoffel, Vancouver, Canada. Thank you for the presentation. Um, we're noticing right now there's a lot of different uh, chaotic climate changes right now on the planet, all over the planet. And it seems to correlate very well with your uh, understanding that consciousness affects climate. So would you say there's a very strong correlation with uh, the uh, instability right now on a political, economic level on the planet where people's consciousness affects the, the climate on the planet. Uh, okay. 
Do you hear me? Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, you are absolutely right. Those are interrelated situations. Chaotic transformation of climate and chaos that we have in our societies worldwide. But this is, to my mind, it's not that we are influencing climate. And it's not climate influencing us. It's not, it's much more than that. We are part of universal cosmic system. So we are under the influence of huge energy rays from the cosmos, from the universe. And this energy coming from the cosmos has tremendous influence to our solar system, to behavior of sun, to our Earth situation, to geomagnetic situation on the Earth, to transformation of climate, and to us as a part of so we are part of the cosmic so if we have turmoil in the universe, if we are in this part of the universe, then the turmoil in our Earth, in our society. This idea was first proposed by uh, our Russian scientist <coughs> Alexander Chevsky in 1924. Uh, he published a book in France, in Paris, uh, Earth's Echo of Cosmic Storms, where he demonstrated very clear correlation between number of uh, uh, dots on the Earth, on the Sun, and a different situation on the Earth. <laughs> in economics, in history. Later on, he published another paper, big paper, that he demonstrated correlation with political situations, political events, revolutions. After this, he was arrested by Stalin regime, he was put in jail, him, but he survived and was able to make a lot of interesting scientific achievements. So, again, from my point of view, now we are in the process of tremendous climate transformation, tremendous. No doubts in global and it's a huge process. But it's not just linear process. It has nothing to do with our human activity. It's, it's, it's all nonsense. It's all just bullshit. It is cycle. Cycles that we have and we had all over the history of the Earth. At my lectures on this topic, I like to show pictures by uh, Holland painter Bruegel from 16th century and the age of 16th, 17th century, where we see Holland covered with snow, with all rivers totally frozen. And you know that skiing and skating was invented in Holland by that time. So it was time of so named Little Age Ace in Europe. And it was very cold climate in Europe by that time for several centuries. And it was time of great development of Europe. Because again, it's very well known that when we have cold climate, we have big development of civilization. When we have warm climate, we have decline and chaos, what we have now. Now we are in the cycle, still in the cycle of this uh, uh, warming, global warming, that is very well and turmoil that we have in our societies all the way. Okay. Thank you. Uh, may I just ask another question, if I may? Um, there's a lot of cell phone usage now, or cell phone towers, or Gwent towers, or Wi Fi now. And there's uh, evidence now that all these uh, signals are affecting the human cells. Um, Having said that, have you noticed an increase in the effect of cell phones or Wi-Fi on, on your clients or your patients or in your research with your bio well? Okay, so, of course, at many conferences, when I'm presenting, those are people who are presenting materials and data on devastating effect of cell phones. 
And we know it is increase of brain cancer. It is increase of child. It is increase of electromagnetic So it is no doubt that electromagnetic fields, when they are not properly used, they may be damaging. No doubt. At the same time, from other countries, we are having development of mobile phones at least for 20 years now. Now we have billions of mobile phones worldwide. We have Wi-Fi. We have technological, technical electromagnetic fields. So would it be so dangerous? Then we, we all would have died. But we are still alive somehow. <laughs> and some of us are in good health. And I hope all of us will be. So what does it mean? It means selection. Was very sensitive electromagnetic field. In the first for those people, it may be tremendous. <clears throat> In particular, no doubt. It may be dangerous for pregnant women at some trimesters. It may be tremendously dangerous for young children, for babies. No doubt. It is mostly uh, devastating, dangerous at night when you sleep and your system is over. And of course, it all depends on amplitude and the power of the field you are in, on uh, frequency, on uh, the way how it is chaotic. So it's many, many factors. Of course, if people have big antenna staying nearby their house, of course it would be drastic. In Russia, in Soviet Union, it was very strict regulations, and there are still. It was totally forbidden any human activity on the high power electrical lines. Okay. It was demonstrated that it is really a uh, very uh, strong uh, effect on health. No other country except for Soviet Union, Russia had these regulations. Okay. That is why you go to France, you go to uh, Holland, you go to Belgium, you see uh, kindergartens just under those lines. And of course, this is dangerous, just dangerous. So that is why, again, we have no factor in our environment. Also, only for the last 20 years. Now, of course, we need to understand whether it is dangerous, whether it is beneficial, or who knows how. Someone will survive and be stronger. Someone will die, for sure. No more. And again, we have many data. The no doubts, experimental results. And with your consciousness, with your attention, with your attitude, you can influence this process for yourself and for your environment. And you can transform negative factors into positive. So, because our conscience has tremendous power. Okay? Questions? Okay, you're welcome. So, I just want to, so may I ask a question? Yes, of course. Okay, sir. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. So I was just reading before that uh, the U2 experiments was made by uh, the Health, Health Maths Institute in California. You may have heard about it. They have 14 units distributed in the whole world measuring the uh, collective human consciousness. And they were... Um, recognizing that's one day before the event of 9-11 uh, that the human consciousness was giving completely different data as if the human consciousness collectively is not only able to change the physical reality but it was also able to feel changes in the collective consciousness of the humanity due to the intention of the people who were attacking the two towers. If you have any comments on this. 
Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. It is very well known data, very well known experiments, and uh, there are many, several um, uh, global systems of this kind who are trying to measure the inf influence of different events. So, again, no doubt that our consciousness, collective consciousness, has influence to the environment. No doubts at all. We, in Russia, we had very interesting experiments by a big group of people who was uh, flying on the special military airplane uh, on the high altitudes, much higher than commercial airplanes. And in this altitude, uh, the level of radioactivity is quite high. By collective meditation by a group of people, they were able to reduce this level of radioactivity in the plane. It was repeatable experiment. So, when we have big events, then of course it is detectable, and we can detect it with our Sputnik device. We can detect it with different devices, and you know that now the biggest events in the world those are World Championship. When in India they have championship on cricket. It is the biggest event maybe in the world <laughs> because you know that it's a billion people who are involved in this uh, championships. Same world football championship, same some big games uh, maybe in the United States, you know, that uh, American football. So, and it's all detectable. Now, of course, these are just, I would say, chaotic activity of human consciousness and the main organizer those are big business in sport they are organizing this at the same time all the sensors they respond not only to human consciousness but to environmental station as well and we have a lot of data that uh, they respond to earthquakes big earthquakes the response to uh, eruption, volcano eruptions. So to distinguish it is very difficult. But what's important? Only now in 21st century, we are developing this science of consciousness. And now it is big scientific trend. We transformed from parapsychology to science. We have many lines in this science. We have materialistic science, we have more, I would say, holistic science, uh, lines. And it took us, it will take us many, many years to come to some concepts, real concepts, but it will be done. Because you know that uh, what the difference between just observation that we are having now from real scientific data. Observations, observations. Okay, now after, 9-11, uh, it's very easy to tell. Oh, beforehand, it was possible to detect it with some sensors. But only when based on some measurements, you would be able to predict something. Then it would be scientific. And it's happening. It will happen. So we are slowly moving to this altogether. It's not just one laboratory. It's not just one group. There's many scientific groups in the world now. Finally, we have good response in the scientific community, in society. And I'm sure that after many, several decades, we would be able to develop this scientific line. Okay, a couple of more questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hashem. Okay. Yes, you're welcome. Maria, just regulate. Francois? Uh, yes, Dr. Karka, I have another question. Um, regarding dark matter, is there any, uh, it can split me, or are you planning to uh, uh, create a device that can measure the effects of dark matter on human consciousness? 
<laughs> very good question, very, very good. Would someone know what does it mean, dark matter? Then we would have the, have the all this device. Unfortunately, you know, it is, uh, it was, I would say, discovered experimentally only just a decade ago. You know that dark matter was predicted by Einstein in his equation. But he decided that it's nonsense. So he uh, just deleted this uh, part of equation. Now we have it. It was proven. But how we can develop some sign, uh, some device if we don't know what does it mean? <laughs> so, so maybe at some moment when we would be able to put our sensors on satellites, then we would be able to have some effect on dark matter. But of course, it's only next steps. You know that we have great scientists, uh, Simeon Schnoll, Russia, mm -hmm. who, uh, who has developed this tremendously important data on the influence of cosmic activity on uh, a very subtle process on the Earth. We just had this discussion recently about those data. We, it is one concept that it may be detection of the influence of dark matter. Maybe, but it's only concept. So, but it's interesting, it's amazing. To me, it's tremendously important and uh, wonderful topic that all previous concepts of uh, cosmophysics was de destroyed, totally destroyed. It is great because it means that we are moving to new stage of our understanding. Slowly, it will take us maybe decades, maybe I wouldn't survive till, till that time, but it is great. Because when they declare in Academy of Science that everything is known, then this is, this is devastating. When they declare, they have to declare, they have to accept that unfortunately, all our previous concept was wrong. That is very good. That is a billion. So let's let's hope for this. <laughs> okay. If I may ask one last question, I'm sorry, since I'm here, um, you've heard about indigo indigo children or star children. The, those that are born right now apparently have a higher level of consciousness or DNA activation. Have you found in your measurements of these children or these people? Um, with your bio instruments? You see, uh, very good question, very good question. But if you are interested in this question, if uh, Maria and, uh, and all the team decide that it's a good topic, I am ready to next hour in our meeting uh, develop to this topic. Because it's not just the simple answer. It is very, very important and interesting topic what's going on with children. I am involved in this uh, research and uh, we are meeting with uh, scientists, with doctors, with psychologists, neuropsychologists discussing this topic. So it is very important, very dangerous situation and very exciting situation. So again, if you decide, then maybe at some moment next year, we'll be able to have this hour and discussing this topic. I will be happy to present you a lot of data on this topic. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Korakov. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Next one. Next question. Hi. Uh, yes. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Very good, Jim. Oh, hi. Uh, Jim from Victoria, British Columbia, okay. right next door to Francois. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> And uh, I'm just wondering if you had any comments about the, uh, the phenomenon of the Mandela effect, if it's related to human consciousness or if it's something else. You, you mean Mandela effect? The Mandela effect, yeah, where people remember things differently? Uh, yes, 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 I know this topic. Yes, of course, of course, it is related to human consciousness. It is one of the many effects of consciousness that we don't understand at all. At the same time, uh, it is not enough uh, real data. Because you know that 
to understand something, at least to have concept, we need to collect data and it takes time. So that's why I'm very cautious uh, about this type of effects when we have some uh, data on the internet, some evidences, but it's not really conclusive. Okay. You know that internet now is a big uh, garbage. <laughs> you can find everything there. You can find mostly garbage, but in this garbage, sometimes you can find diamonds. <laughs> mostly if you know how to look for. So that's why I think, uh, I have no doubt it's related to human consciousness, but still we, I don't, I haven't seen enough real data to have some conclusions about this topic. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you. Uh, my question about the um, effect of the geopathic stress zones, the, the geopathic uh, lines which is stressing detrimentally the, the human health as one of the sources where we would be uh, physically up to emotionally uh, sick. And uh, my question is about how we can benefit from the combination of using the BioWell device and the Sputnik together in order to uh, measure these zones and if there is an additional modality to harmonize these zones to make living at home more healthy, how we can then re-measure and see the difference on the diagrams between existing of the stressing energy coming from the earth slide and after harmonizing these areas. There are some experiments about this. Yeah, very good question. Okay. So, you know, in Russia we have uh, signs of uh, studying geopathic zones. I can show you one second. I can show you one book. Um, do you see this book? Yes. Russian, of course. <laughs> but the name of the book, Geoactive Zones of uh, Finno Scandinavia. And it's written by several um, colleagues of mine. And uh, those are really very good colleagues, very good professors. And uh, it is a big research. You see, it's a big book. It's a big book. Uh, results of big research done on geopathic zones in Scandinavia, including St. Petersburg. And it is, we have this research for many years. Uh, we are involved in this research. We are using different instrumentations, not only Sputnik. But Sputnik is a very good instrument for this type of research. So, now if you know our software, we have this parameter, environmental activity. To take this parameter, you need to take measurement at least for 35-40 minutes. At least. Then you need to uh, define three intervals in processing. Three intervals, it's important as well. And one of the intervals should be for half an hour, 30 minutes. Then we are calculating standard deviation in this 30 minutes time. And we define this parameter. And then software shows you whether it is green, yellow, red uh, zone. And this is based on several years of research, big research, as I've shown you. Uh, it's a big book published. Uh, that uh, was uh, allowed us to correlate this measurement with uh, activity of geoactive and geopathic zones. So there are areas beneficial for life, and there are areas dangerous for life, and it's very devastating for life. And of course, if we understand that it is good or bad, then we can apply some measure, uh, some uh, different uh, means to balance this situation. And again, we have a lot of data, we have very good friends and colleagues who are developing these different energy devices, 
starting from pyramids of this different uh, size up to different devices. And uh, you can find those on the internet in the human light system as well, these type of devices that can balance environment. And then again, we need to repeat measurement with Sputnik and see effect. I never believe in claims. When someone claims, oh, this is a wonderful device. Okay, guys. Very good. Let's measure it before and after. And you see effect. Whereas if you have positive effect for this particular device, then it's okay. Wonderful. If not, then it's nonsense. Once, of course, we should remember that the most important for all of us, it is our bedroom. It is place where we sleep. And it is combination of different factors. Of course, it is the influence of geoactive zones itself, but at the same time, it is air, it is humidity, it is amount of negative and positive ions, it is level of noise, it is level of light, it is level of ultrasound, infrasound electromagnetic noise. So, you see, it's a combination of factors. So, uh, I really ask you to pay most attention to your bedrooms. Take measurements with Sputnik in the bedroom. <coughs> and then, you need to decide whether it is good for you to stay in this place, or it is maybe you need some attention transformation so it is really very important so you have everything you have this uh, in manuals manuals are available so it's all methodology is over there you have a lot of results now i'm uh, just uh, i'll put on amazon.com new edition of my book uh, the energy of space and there i present new data that was collected in the last time. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, very good. So I hope that, uh, okay, one more question. Okay, this one, mm -hmm. please. Hi, Dr. Krok. Um, I'm just wondering, you take into account the Schumann resonance um, in, in, in the effect as it increases on an environment, on people? I, sorry, I don't understand your question. The common resonance of the ionosphere between the um, Earth and space mm -hmm. changes. And I personally find it quite, um, I feel it in my own body. So I'm uh, just wondering, does the Sputnik assess that in some way? You see, uh, you are right. The influence of uh, geo, um, uh, geomagnetic situation it is tremendous, and the most important for our health it's not just the uh, level of this uh, geomagnetic activity, but it's uh, what I mean. It was found, and we have uh, really serious interesting data that at the moment when geomagnetic fields became very stable, those are the most negative influence to human consciousness. The most negative. And of course, it depends on many factors. And uh, first of all, it depends on uh, cosmic factors. <coughs> this has nothing to do with our conscious activity. But it has tremendous influence to our conscious activity. So again, we are part of the cosmos. We are part of the universe. And the universe has tremendous influence on every moment of our life. Now, we are just uh, developing by ourselves on the Earth. I'm sure that we are supervised by higher civilizations. But uh, it's understandable that for them, we are in kindergarten. We are just little children playing in the sand. We still need several thousand years of development to come to next level of civilization, where and when will be accepted to this 
universal love. Let's hope that maybe it will happen again with us. <laughs> okay. Okay, very good. So I was really happy to see all of you, not maybe all. I was really, in, again, I really appreciate organizers of human life system who done it because to, to me it's very important for all of us to meet together like this to have this type of discussions to share results to share yeah, ideas different ideas and of course we need to understand everything that i've told you now it is just my visions my ideas so you may have absolutely different and it's very good the more different opinions we have, the better. This would allow us to develop. Only in interactivity, intercommunication, we'll be able to move forward. So let's do this. Let's do this together. So happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, <laughs> and let's move all together to next year. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kratkov, for, for, for the exciting webinar. And you guys um, join our course if you are interested in the human life system online course. And also, I would like to tell you that we have a special offer for all of you the 20% discount during this Christmas week for any products of the GDV planet, including the course. So use this opportunity to buy whatever you want and give yourself a present. Thank you. Have a nice evening or day. Thank you. Oh, namaste. <clears throat> namaste. Okay.